Okay, so I was asked a question um, on using A Course in Miracles and uh, praying for others to see them as the Course would teach us and also praying um, to see someone with cancer in truth and them dying and also free will and um, how the Course teacher, the person was listening to seemed to have uh, see the world as an illusion and didn't really mind um, but I, th I think it sounded like the miracles were happening as she was praying for others um, but however you know uh, with uh, some prayers um, person did someone died with cancer and, and uh, so um, and wanted to know about free will so I'll just speak I'll just speak on those themes uh, for this video Quite a few things to share. Um, so for me, actually, the world is just uh, what I see of the world. And I think the lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles is actually quite brilliant. It's very short, but it it summarizes perception very clearly. Um, my, you know, I have percep my personal perception are the beliefs that I'm holding in mind. And there are collective uh, beliefs from the collective consciousness that hold shared illusions. And these manifest in the world. So things like cancer and whatnot are part of the shared, you know, shared collective belief. And then I'll be seeing from my perception a lot of my beliefs during the day. Like, oh, there's not enough money or people are bad or whatever it is. And then there'll be, sometimes I'll see my beliefs and sometimes there'll be a mix of my beliefs and collective beliefs that others are holding in mind. So it's still all belief systems, but in essence, I think the easier way is just to see whatever I see in the day is my perception of just my beliefs, which gets filtered. And I see this image of the world, which is my perception. It's not really the truth when I'm clear of ego. And what about prayer for others in free will? Um, uh, there's one thing. If you do the course intensely, if you do the course in miracles intensely, you'll clear all your resentments, your fears, your guilt, your shame. Um, because you'll see your, your brother as sinless, uh, as holy as yourself. Um, and that's great. It is to love, just to be love, actually. Unconditional love beyond a me loving you. Just the universality of love is, is, is where it's leading to, the holy instant, which is beyond a me lo loving you. But um, um, there is a phase which Hawkins talks about, and I would also endorse, where... If you remove your critical filter of your ego and all its belief systems, um, you go to a place of un you get to a place of love where you see everyone as as lovely, sinless, and holy. Um, that that is a point in the spiritual evolution, but you haven't yet got spirit. You may you usually don't have in the early stages spiritual discernment yet. So really, what you, you see is that everyone is lovable and trustworthy. Um, on a spiritual level, that's true, but not on a not in the illusion. It's not necessarily true. So, uh, if um, <clears throat> if someone knocks at your door and says they'll put a new roof on your house, you can trust me with uh, fifty grand. Uh, if you're doing the course of miracles and you're in that divine state in the early stages, you won't you'll have access to loving everyone and trusting everyone, but not yet uh, the maturity of spiritual discernment and intuition. So they'll go, give me 50 grand. I'll just fix, I can see your roof's got a leak in it. I'll fix it for you. Sure, brother. You're my holy brother. I trust you like uh, like I would my my brother. Uh, so yeah, here's 50 grand. Uh, and you'll probably find that you'll never see them again. Um, that's only because that's the only, uh, just a warning. Uh, you, at more advanced stages, you'll get to spiritual discernment. So just a thing on there. So yes. Everyone is your brother and you should love them. Uh, but in this world, um, you also want to develop to spiritual discernment. In the, in the spirit world, you know, you don't have to worry about leaking roofs and giving your money away. But in this world um, where you have a physical body and you're paying the rent, um, just, just be aware of that. So it doesn't mean necessarily as you're going through the Course of Miracles to be stupid. Uh, love them. Sometimes it's love people and see them as your brother but don't necessarily give them the money. Um, so because you can't yet have got spiritual discernment or intuition or muscle testing. So uh, you can't yet discern the wolf uh, in sheep's clothing yet in this world. 
Okay. Um, in terms of free will, uh, I, I agree with both Buddha and Jesus Christ. I don't agree with the teachers that teach free will, but I, I can see their context, you know, at the level of the observer, where you're no longer an individual, everything happens spontane spontaneously, intuitively. So there is no one making choice at that level. So if I'm in the witnesser and the, the ego dissolves, there is no me to make a choice. And therefore, everything is just happening the way it is. So it, it would be like a, someone who's just at that level could say something like, and that would be true for them, um, that there is no such as thing as free will. Um, but I would, uh, but actually, for me, this whole world, I mean, that's a very advanced level. We're getting to the levels of enlightenment and uh, the dissolving of the individual self. But for everyone else, I'd say uh, I agree with Buddha and Jesus Christ. There is free will. Uh, we're here, this purgatory, it's to make choices and undo, uh, undo the karma we're born with. Uh, and to make a different choice. It's, uh, it's not like oh, I'm just going to sit here and everything will just happen the way it is. So I actually have the choice to forgive or not to forgive. I have the choice to uh, um, uh, look with love, choose love rather than fear. I have the choice um, to uh, see family differently, to see work differently. Uh, it's not like uh, I'm just going to, well, there's no, there's no free will. Uh, I won't make a choice because it's just going to happen the way it's going to happen. I would, I would agree with both Jesus Christ and Buddha. Uh, Jesus Christ, to forgive and to love, but to trust in Jesus as your savior, uh, so that you don't have to come back to this place. You get to heaven and don't have to come back here. This is purgatory. Uh, this is a place where you can undo a lot of stuff and get to a better place. So I agree with Jesus Christ. I also agree with Buddha. He says. Um, the karma of being a human being is to suffer old age suffering and death over and over again, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So it doesn't sound that great, really, coming back here and um, for, you know, uh, many lifetimes and just having to go through old age suffering and death over and over again. Uh, he recommends enlightenment, getting to the place where the individual self is dissolved in this lifetime so that you don't have to come back here. You know, he's sort of saying this is purgatory. You don't really want to come back here. Uh, you want to get to the, to the. You want you want to keep choosing not to attach, uh, not to let release all your attachments to this world, so that you can get to the non-dual, to the observer, to the infinite state, the dissolving of the individual self, the separate self, and then you won't reincarnate in this place. He doesn't really seem to be recommending reincarnating over and over again for various reasons. So I agree with both of these two avatars. Um, so I'd, I'd, um, I do agree from a certain context, if you're already enlightened, there is no free will. But I would say to everyone else who's not at that place, uh, you have free will. I mean, you, you get to choose to forgive or to release attachments. And I would encourage that uh, with your free will. Um, so that's my view. I know some uh, a lot of people talk about there is no free will. I think there's a context to that. So, um, yeah, that was a lovely quote. Oh, yes, sort of. Um, so each level of, co the more you dissolve your ego, the more your prayers have a positive effect on others. So your level of consciousness. So um, a prayer from Buddha or Jesus Christ looking at you and praying for you in just one prayer or Mother Teresa and the prayer of uh, a criminal saying, yeah, I bless you, brother. Um has a totally different effect because their level of consciousness is different. Like a criminal who's not done any spiritual work and just says, bless you, brother, in a church, uh, would probably have zero effect because they have probably, unless they have an illuminating point while they pray, uh, because their level of consciousness is very low. So the prayer doesn't have much power behind it, much love behind it. Uh, and the power of love is very, you know, when it's very intense, is extremely strong. Um, hence, so uh, um, it's reported throughout history that the saints and the avatars, miracles and healings happen spontaneously just in their presence. Um, and um, Mother Teresa, for example, became a saint, as I understand it, I'm not an expert, because someone came with cancer and met her, and then um, after meeting Mother Teresa, had an x-ray done and the cancer disappeared. 
And that was evidence enough for the church that she was a saint because they, they were typical characteristics. So, so um, would a, if you went to a prison and, and saw saw you 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 someone who was a criminal, I don't think that kind of miracle would happen or intervention would happen because they're very blocked from the infinite source of love and truth. Um, so to see the truth, well, you know, another thing on death. Um, is that actually sometimes if you pray for someone and they just die peacefully, that would be, I would see that as probably a great thing, you see, because, um, you know, in the other in the other place, they, they may have transitioned from, you know, the, uh, transitioned with a lot of grace to the next place. So you can't really say, I mean, to see it from your angle, which is limited perception and say that, um you know, you know, their 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 bodies racked in pain, and they've got a huge cancer in them, and, uh, and you want them to to have an instant healing and um, and return to the body. It, it's not necessarily for their highest good. So you can see it from different angles. The more I mean, I sort of see it like I just left the body in peace and went straight to heaven, or became enlightened. I mean, that, I think that's great. I don't think uh, sticking around in this place forever is necessarily the best option. Um, anyway, so there's different ways of seeing it. Um, having had it, had near death spiritual experiences and white light spiritual experiences, I see there's other places far more beautiful than than this place. Um, so, so you can see it differently from different angles as you get different spiritual experiences of, of what is death and what is leaving the body and are you the body and are you not the body and is being in a body necessarily conducive to the highest illuminated states um so there's different different angles as as you grow and praying for another as you pray for them you don't know the prayer may have been very very positive for them um and may have actually helped them to speed up something that was good for them um not necessarily that um praying for someone who's ill that they get the type of healing that you want is necessarily the best for them also the other thing which you know from 12 step which we know from 12 step addiction programs is sometimes people need to hit a rock bottom so intervening is not in their highest good because there's a spiritual lesson they must learn so um before they can make a different decision in life so uh, if you sort of see like um uh, a person who's using drugs or taking alcohol, you just want to pray and make them not just magically stop. Their, their whole life incarnation can be to hit rock bottom and make a different choice or give them the option of making a different choice for seeing what is the end result of overconsumption of drugs and alcohol. So that was a lovely question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to press stop record uh, on my thing uh where, where are we recording stop recording